It's a pretty good time to be a golden armoured talon of the Emperor, as both the Adeptus Custodes and the Sister of Silence have got some pretty nice new rules in their Psychic Awakening book, War of the Spider. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. In today's review we'll be looking through the rules for the Adeptus Custodes and the Sisters of Silence from Psychic Awakening War of the Spider, going over all the rules in the book for them, and discussing what I think are the strongest things and are most likely to be seen in game. In terms of content for the Talons of the Emperor, on the Adeptus Custodes side we have an excellent new Lord of the Shield host stratagem in the Captain Commander, basically one command point for an extra quite nice buff. You can nominate your custodians to be from various different shield hosts, each one unlocking an extra warlord trait, relic and stratagem. There are five of these, and then a section of 14 new stratagems to give them more options in game. On the Sisters of Silence side, the most important buff in my mind is that they can now be taken as part of an Adeptus Custodes detachment. We've got all the data sheets reprinted again, so they're actually in an official book for a change, rather than having to be dependent on a White Dwarf article. And we've got quite a generous amount of stratagems in 8 new stratagems for the Sisters of Silence, again giving helpful tactical options and shutting down psychers even further. I think there's some very usable and decently powerful stuff here, which is definitely going to give the faction a buff, so let's jump straight into it with a look at this Captain Commander stratagem. So this is basically taking the format that I thought it would when Warhammer Community previewed the rule. It is indeed a 1 command point stratagem that can be used only once in the game. It basically gives any one shield captain an extra trait from this list. It can't be a named character, but it doesn't necessarily have to be your warlord. I think that's kind of handy, because it means that if you want to create some sort of melee monster shield captain, it's good to not have to worry too much about throwing him directly into the fight. Even if all you have to do is pay the 1 command points to have someone take up your warlord's mantle, it's still best to avoid that if possible. Honestly, I think that these traits are pretty much an auto-include in any Adeptus Custodes list, even if you're literally just paying the one command point for the command point farming ability, and it's pretty much going to be worth it. It is a bit of a shame that you're going to only have to pick one of these, which I think will mean that some of them just don't see play, just literally because of opportunity cost, but they do have an advantage that because this is a stratagem, you can pick these in after you've seen the opponent's army, which say if all you wanted was a melee buff, then you could maybe take one that either counters vehicles or hordes for example. In terms of the actual traits themselves, the first is Slayer of the Unclean. It makes unmodified wound rolls of 6 to double the damage characteristic of that attack, giving an example for a d3 damage weapon saying d3 damage becomes 2d3. I'd describe that as a fairly modest close combat buff to be honest. It's actually going to be making the biggest impact when you're fighting against vehicles. Say if you're only wounding on 5s and 6s, then a good number of your actual wounds are going to be 6s, so we're going to be doubling the damage characteristic. It might be most powerful on a Dawn Eagle Jet Bike Shield Captain, as they can reroll wound rolls on the charge, and that will mean more sixes. Next we have Swift as the Eagle, which adds one to your advanced charge and move characteristics for your captain. Certainly a very decent movement buff for an on-foot captain, and potentially could help when charging out of Deep Strike as well. Again, might combo very nicely with that Auric Aquila's jet bike, the one that allows you to reroll charges. Next we have Strategic Mastermind, which is a command point farming trait, and it's basically on a 5 plus for each command point spent. You get one command point back, up to the maximum of 1 per battle round. I think this makes this trait basically an auto-include even if you didn't want anything else. You either like to get more command points back by spending this one command point than you had in the first place. Next we have Bane of Abominations. This one's an anti-vehicle melee buff. Basically you re-roll the wound roll whenever you're attacking monsters or vehicles. I think good for a footbound shield captain armed with an axe or spear. And obviously quite a good reactive buy-in that you can just take up, say if your opponent's coming at you with nothing but monsters or vehicles. Indomitable Constitution adds 2 to the wounds characteristic of your shield captain, we saw this previewed in the Warhammer Community article, a reasonable defensive buff, could be particularly nasty if you're combining it with a 3 plus invul save and victor of the blood games, meaning that he's not going to be taking very many wounds in the first place. Next we have Master of Melee, which is the anti-horde buff, whenever this guy is within 1 inches of an enemy unit with 6 or more models, then you increase its attack characteristic by 2. Again, a very good reactive buy-in. If you're against nothing but hordes of orcs or guard or something, then might well be worth it just because it probably will add up to enemy casualties over the course of the game. Next we have Unstoppable Destroyer, which could be a very powerful buy-in if you're fighting an enemy with a high melee threat. Basically you pile in and consolidate D3 plus 3 inches, so a little bit of extra movement there. The pile-in can just be to any model within that distance. It doesn't necessarily have to be the closest one, which is certainly a pretty handy quality of life thing in close combat but the Consolidate ability is a potentially slightly broken one, as it means that he doesn't even have to go towards the closest model at all, he can just go wherever he wants with that D3 plus 3 inches. 
and this makes it quite like that Iron Hands Warlord trait. You could potentially literally charge this guy into an Imperial Knight or something, attack with him in the fight phase, and then just consolidate out of engagement range, meaning that that knight can't even be selected to fight. Honestly, a bit of a weird rules interaction, that one. Not particularly relevant unless you think your opponent's got some decent melee threatening units, but in the right circumstances, this could allow you to get a full round of combat with absolutely no fear of reprisals. Next we have Defiant to the Last, which for each wound that this model has lost, increases its attacks characteristic by 1 to a maximum of 3 additional attacks. So for this you will be banking on your character being injured but not killed, but this really isn't all that unlikely with very durable Custodes Captains. I'm not sure it would necessarily be my first choice just because it's so susceptible to a counterplay, but in the right circumstances this could be very powerful indeed. Finally we have Inspirational Exemplar, which is just a simple plus 3 inch to aura abilities, usually just your standard rerolls. And kind of a shame that you can't take this one with the Vexilla. I'd argue that pretty much any one of these could be justified for one command point, and particularly if built around. I do think that in general though, I wouldn't set up to just use any single one of these. If you're trying to build some sort of stacked fighty shield captain, then I think about either buying in one of the defensive buffs or offensive buffs, just purely based on what your opponent has to offer in their army. If you're going to be tangling with other scary melee threats, then Unstoppable Destroyer is a really good shout in my mind. And if you don't think that increasing the shield captain's fighting or durability is going to be super relevant in the game, say if you're facing a load of chaff infantry that aren't really going to care about his combat skills, then simply the command point farming one isn't all that bad an idea. In any case, I'd certainly take one of these. Having access to these is definitely a buff to a custodian's force. Now we come on to the shield hosts themselves then. Basically for each separate detachment of custodies in your army, you can nominate a shield host for them, and you can have a custodies army made up of multiple shield hosts. Basically in that detachment, all units gain the shield host keyword, which you swap out for one of the five shield hosts that you have available, which are the Shadow Keepers, the Solar Watch, the Emissaries Imperatus, the Aquilon Shield, and the Dread Host. The only custodies that don't get access to the shield host rule is Trajan Valoris, and Sisters of Silence if you do choose to include them in the detachment. Each of these shield hosts has its own warlord trait, relic and stratagem as we've mentioned, although I am a little bit uncertain as to whether or not we can buy in the relics for each shield host with the open the vault stratagem. The wording on the rule actually says that you need to be led by a certain shield host warlord, and then you can give a unit with that same shield host keyword the relic of terror associated with that shield host rather than one of the ones from the main book. It's the same with the Warlord trait as well, now we can gain a Warlord trait with an extra stratagem as well. I suspect those both might need an FAQ. I suspect at the moment that rules as written you probably can't give the relics and Warlord traits out with stratagems, they would actually have to be your actual Warlord's relic and the Warlord themselves. In any case, let's take a look at the shield hosts themselves. First up we have the Shadow Keepers. As we know from the Warhammer Community Preview, these are the ones that guard the vaults under the Imperial Palace. Their Warlord trait is Lock Warden, and it's minus 1 to the hit rolls of characters when you're in melee, and also when they're fighting a character in melee, then it's minus 1 to the character saves, including invul saves. It's most certainly a very powerful anti-character buff, could be potentially good on a Dawn Eagle Shield Captain, one that could actually make himself get into combat with certain characters, or it might even be useful against, say, Imperial Knights, where a lot of the big stompy things often tend to be characters. I'm not sure it's the most take or come as warlord trait though personally. Their relic is the stasis oubliette, basically a temporary stasis prison to try and return them to terror for interrogation, and you basically target a character within 3 inches of your model, until the end of the phase you half their attacks characteristic, rounding up, and you can also re-roll wound rolls of 1 against them. Could potentially be powerful, particularly if you're say fighting against imperial knights as we mentioned, as a knight having half the amount of attacks is quite a big deal. Again though not particularly take or comers, as it's very much character focused again. Their stratagem is my favourite bit for them though, it's one command point for grim responsibility. It's a pretty nice little reactive defensive buff, where if enemy weapons target one of your shadow keepers units, you use this stratagem, and for the rest of the phase, all enemy weapons when targeting that unit are minus one strength. You can use that in the shooting phase or in the fight phase. Now this one is going to kind of be a bit dependent on exactly what sort of weapons are targeting the units. I say you won't really gain much if you're going from strength 6 to strength 7 when weapons are targeting standard toughness 5 custodies. But if you are getting hit by weapons of the relevant strength, then this could be a really powerful debuff. Could be really brutal to add on to a large unit of terminators or bikes perhaps. Just as another annoyance to stop your opponent from killing them. Combined with some of the other stratagems in this book, we could particularly make terminators incredibly hard to shift. Next up we come on to the Solar Watch, a bit more of a proactive shield company that launches sorties against any enemies that stray into the solar system themselves. Their warlord trait is Sally Forth, and basically at the start of the movement phase any units within 6 inches of him will have plus 1 movement for that phase. 
Furthermore, if you advance, then you can also shoot with rapid fire weapons in the following shooting phase, but you do subtract one from the hit rolls. Could be kind of handy if you are trying to rush the enemy as soon as possible with a foot host, earn one extra movement and being able to move in advance and then still fire those guardian spears could be pretty handy. I'm not entirely convinced it's going to get looked at over other more defensive warlord traits. It's a nice quality of life buff, but maybe not the most powerful. Next we have the Relic of Terror, which we have already seen, the Swift Silver Talon. The Games Workshop didn't show off its full rules, funnily enough. It's basically a Guardian Spear with Assault 4 and 24 inch range, so repeatedly firing it will add up to more dead enemies over the course of the game, particularly when you're hitting with B-rolls with a Shield Captain's Ballistic Skill. On top of this though, it just makes your Captain extra flexible in a turn in which he fell back. Naturally that does depend on your opponent either having charged him themselves or having remained in combat with him voluntarily, which might not be the best idea in the first place as you know that he can fall back and shoot, but if he does get stuck right in the middle of the enemy then you can't tarp at him, he's going to be firing that spear every turn and also charging in for his full melee potential. Their stratagem for one command point is the Eagle Strike, which is one of these fun and free stratagems for zero CP, so basically you'll be trying to use this once every battle round if you can. Basically every time an enemy character is destroyed by as a result of an attack made by a solar watch model, then you can trigger this ability, and next time your opponent wants to use a stratagem, it will cost them one command point more than normal. You can only use this once per battle round though. Basically if you are playing with the shield company, then it means that every time you kill a character, your opponent's CP reserves are just going to be stretched a little bit further. It isn't the most enormous buff in the world, it might take you a turn or two before you start to kill any characters at all, but it's quite nice in that it doesn't have any opportunity cost, it's just something that happens for free. Next up we have the Emissaries Imperatus, and these guys are the custodians who are dispatched to deliver the Emperor's will, whether bearing top secret messages or taking command of certain war zones, to have the heart of the Imperium dictate what happens on certain battlefields. Their warlord trait is Voice of the Emperor, it's basically a buff that adds 3 inches to all of his aura abilities, and also any Imperium units that are nearby can also use their warlord's leadership characteristic. That one's a buff that goes out 9 inches irrespective of this trait. Shield captains have a leadership of 9, so that could be pretty handy for certain other lower leadership Imperial forces, particularly things like Imperial Guard and the like. Your ability would allow a little bit more flexibility, and in theory I guess you could increase this all the way out to a 12 inch aura range if you did fancy using your Captain Commander Stratagem on the same guy. Otherwise you could potentially give this to a Vexillus Praetor, the extra 3 inch to his aura abilities could be pretty handy making that Vexilla Magnifica aura to subtract one from hit rolls, to stretch just a little bit further, and allow your Adeptus Custodius to position a bit better. Their unique relic is a Relic Vexilla, and it's called the Vexilla Dominatus. You essentially replace their Vexilla ability with a 6 inch aura that gives units within this range, the ability to count as 3 models rather than 1 when you're securing objectives. I have to be honest, I'm not really the biggest fan of this one, occasionally I'm sure it will snag you a few more victory points, but I think there could be many games that go by when this makes absolutely no difference whatsoever, just because either obsec hasn't been an issue, or you've already used your objective secures to take it away from enemy units, or the buff itself hasn't been powerful enough to swing the balance. I'm just not sure it's going to be worth sacrificing the other very good free Vexilla abilities, and also further double down on it by spending a relic on it to arguably make him worse. Finally, and more positively, we have the Emperor's Hand, which is a pretty useful stratagem to counter all manner of enemy trickery, and you use it when an Emissary's Imperatus unit is chosen to shoot or fight with them. Their attacks will ignore any modifiers, whether they're minus ones to hit, minus ones to wound, anything that'll affect the attack's armor penetration characteristic, and the opponent won't even benefit from cover either. Even just the ignores cover aspect could be enough to really justify it, say if you happen to be firing a whole ton of Virtus Praetor Hurricane Bolters at an enemy. Things like Harlequin Skyweavers, which rely on modifiers to stay alive, really wouldn't be thanking you for this one. Next up we have the Aquilan Shield Shield Host, and it's Aquilan with an AN at the end, not an ON at the end, that was just a typo on my part. The Aquilan Shield are defenders of terror, both in a planetary sense, and they also offer bodyguard protection to certain vital individuals within the Imperial bureaucracy. Their Warlord trait is Revered Companion, and this one's a nice simple half the damage characteristic of any attacks targeting your Warlord. As a durability buff, this is going to compete with the 5 plus feel no pain, and the minus 1 to hit that you can get from the standard codex. It will be very powerful against some attacks, anything with an even amount of damage will literally half the amount of damage on the Warlord, making the Warlord twice as durable, so great against overcharged plasma and the like. Against damage 3 weapons, it'll be about the same as superior creation on average, and of course it offers no protection at all against damage 1 weapons or mortal wounds. For me, I think that superior creation is probably just the best to take all comers option. 
This will be better in some circumstances, but I'm not sure it really offers that much unique that you want to take this shield company for compared with superior creation. Their Relic of Terror is the Presidious, which can only be taken by models with Storm Shields, and is minus 1 to the wound roll with attacks that target this commander. Because it's attached to a Storm Shield, that's going to be one of the Foot Shield Captains or the Vexilla. And as defensive buffs go, minus 1 to wound rolls is actually a really significant one. With Custodies, you're rarely going to be wounded on 2s, so it's going to be 3s or worse. So in general, it's going to be a 33% or better durability buff to the model. And when they're being wounded on 5s, say with Las Guns or Bolters for example, that basically makes them twice as tough as they were before. With this one, you could make a character that's just really extraordinarily hard to remove. You could take this relic, maybe give him Miraculous Constitution, take Victor of the Blood Games, and maybe even if you were going nuts, you could make him your Captain Commander, to either up his damage output, or just pile on an extra two wounds to the guy. Their stratagem is Shield of Honor, and it's one command point, and for me it's a bit of a strange bodyguard rule. Basically, you use it when an Imperium character is nominated as a target of an attack, and there's no friendly Aquilon Shield Infantry or Aquilon Shield Dreadnought unit within 3 inches of that character. Until the end of the phase, when your opponent is targeting that character, they do measure ranges to that character, but their attack will instead hit the Aquilon Shield unit and not the character. Furthermore, if you overkill the Custodes unit, then the extra hits are lost, they don't go on to hit the character. So it really makes them undeniably great bodyguards. But in general purposes, I don't think that this is going to be very useful, because besides the odd sniper shot, you don't really have all that many weapons that are going to be able to target characters directly. I guess it could help some of the Imperium's more fragile and damage-dealing characters lead from the front. Ones like Ragnar Blackmane spring to mind. He's quite fragile, but incredibly fighty in close combat. If you could pair him with a big unit of custodies, then he might be able to survive even when he's right at the front of the enemy. However, I think that there are very silly interactions that you could do with this as it doesn't specify that the character can't be an absolutely enormous character or a vehicle. You could have a large unit of custodies tanking hits for Rebute Gilliman as he chews through the enemy army, or if we get very, very silly, then you could have these guys acting on bodyguard duty for something ludicrously big and dangerous, such as an Imperial Knight. One of the reasons that we don't see the Knight Castellan played all that much at the moment is because it's just a bit too easy to remove from the table, but imagine if you could park an entire unit of minus one to hit custodies just in front of the thing and make sure that no shots ever hit the Castellan for the first few turns. I think you could even pair this with making the custodies unit extra tough, say by using a Vexilla Magnifica for minus one to hit. They've also gained a fair few stratagems that make them even more tough reactively to enemy fire. I think that this one could really be quite problematic in combination with big shooty Imperial units, but could be really quite fun and fluffy with fragile melee ones, particularly people like Ragnar Blackmane. You could potentially even have these guys tanking wounds for something like the Triumph of St. Catherine from Sisters, or Knight Commander Pass from the Imperial Guard, again whose damage output is great, but is just a bit fragile. A few Aquilan Shield custodies with Storm Shields could really put a stop to enemies trying to remove them. I wouldn't be too surprised if this did get FAQs to not work on vehicles though. Finally, we come to the Dread Host, the custodies force that can act as the avenging wrath of the Emperor, and seeks to spread utter terror and disillusionment, amongst his foes through the utter destruction of certain key threats. Their warlord trait is All-Seeing Annihilator, which is a pretty powerful melee buff to nearby custodies units. Basically, when you make an attack with a melee weapon with a friendly dread host unit within 6 inches of the warlord, then an unmodified roll of 6 to hit scores one additional hit. Basically, when applied to custodies, that's going to amount to another flat 20% buff to damage output in melee. So combined with the shield captain's rerolls that they already have, you're getting around about an extra 40% more melee damage output out of the captain themselves and nearby units. This really is a very solid buffing trait indeed. Next we have the Relic of Terror, which is called Admonimortis. Admonimortis is a Castellan Axe Relic. Its shooting profile is entirely unchanged, but its melee profile is significantly buffed. Basically it gains a pip of AP and a pip of damage making it strength plus 3, AP minus 3, and a flat damage of 3. I believe that this is the first flat damage 3 weapon that the Custodes shield captains can get, and it's really quite a big deal to be able to access something like this, as it's going to just do them so much more good against 3 wound infantry and heavy vehicles. These guys can now be hitting harder than your standard smash captain, as of course now there's no minus 1 to hit on a Castellan axe. You could most certainly think about stacking that with the Dread Host Warlord trait for the extra hits on 6s, but even unbuffed, then this thing really does a number on standard vehicles. On average, you'll be getting around 8 or 9 wounds on any standard Toughness 7 vehicle, even with no other buffs aside from the Shield Captain's reroll of wands. I think the Dread Host is the way to go if you really want to make a fighty foot Shield Captain now. Certainly take this Relic, likely buy in the same Warlord trait from the Dread Host, as it's one of the best for just flatly amping up the damage. And again, there's always the option to upgrade him with one of these Captain Commander traits. 
such as that Bane of Abominations one to re-roll wound rolls against monsters or vehicles. Theoretically, with those three things all in play, one of these guys averages 11 wounds per fight phase against even an Imperial Knight, not too bad at all. Finally, their stratagem is the Golden Light of the Morades, which is used at the start of the charge phase, as basically a buff to charging units that have come out of Deep Strike. You can select one unit for one command point, or three such units for two command points, and until the end of that phase when a charge roll is made for those units, you roll one additional d6 and discard one of the dice. So essentially 3d6 drop the lowest charges just to give you that extra chance of making that magic 9 out of deep strike, though it could potentially be less than that if you have brought them in next to a Vexilla with the stratagem. I think that this is a very good one, it's great to have some more reliable deep strike charges, and it's very helpful for the terminators in particular if you are going down that strategy. I think that the dread host is a very strong shield host indeed, and to be honest is probably my favourite out of them. I think the Aquilin Shield is probably my second favourite. I really like the Shield of Honour ability for allying and doing shenanigans within the Imperium, and their Presidious Relic Storm Shield is pretty impressive as well. Now we come on to the stratagems for the Adeptus Custodes, and there's no less than 14 of them. It's a really strong expansion of options in my opinion. Firstly, and very helpfully, is for one command point you can have 10,000 heroes, which is just the standard additional warlord trait stratagem, and you can only have one of them, it's not de-restricted like the Admech one seems to be. Could be good for getting one of the book warlord traits, maybe in addition to the dread host ones. Miraculous constitution or radiant mantle are rarely bad picks. Next we have ancient artifice, which is basically duty eternal for dreadnoughts, and again it does have the older style wording, where you're halving the damage on the dreadnoughts rather than subtracting one from it. So even more powerful than the standard duty eternal until it gets patched, and even then it'll still be an excellent stratagem, really helping keep your Contempt to Dreadnoughts or Telamon Heavy Dreadnoughts alive, just like in Codex Space Marines. If you do happen to have a Dreadnought in your army and your opponent is shooting at them, then this is basically an auto include to do every turn. Next we have Arcane Genetic Alchemy, which is essentially transhuman physiology, where wound rolls on 1 to 3 always fail on a non-vehicle. I'm afraid I have messed up right in the slide here, it's 2 command points, it is not 1 command point, otherwise it will be flatly better than the standard transhuman physiology. Again, Transhuman is pretty excellent on tough, highly armoured infantry in the Space Marines decks, and it's excellent on all the heavy armoured infantry of the Custodes. They're likely going to need heavy weapons to actually shift them efficiently, things like last cannons and true anti-tank fire, and making all those heavy guns hit on threes or worse is just going to be great on tough units. There really are quite a lot of options in this book, for making one unit of Custodes just extremely tough now. Next, for one command point, we have Eternal Penitent, which is a pre-game Dreadnought stratagem. And for the rest of that game, the Dreadnought adds one to their attacks characteristic, and is able to reroll charges for the entire rest of the game. So certainly another buff to Dreadnoughts, but unfortunately only in combat. So in general, this one's going to be more useful on the Contempt to Dreadnoughts, or the Forge World Contempt to Dreadnoughts. Seems like pretty much an auto-include if you are wanting to run something like a Contempt to Galata's Dreadnought, the one with the enormous Storm Shield. Could be particularly nice if you're thinking of coming in from Deep Strike Reserve with them. Next, for one command point, we have Vengeance of the Machine Spirit which is essentially a copy-paste from the Space Marine version of them, with the difference that it doesn't actually specify data sheets, it's just any vehicle with power of the machine spirit. This is a pretty nice example of the Games Workshop people actually paying attention to Forge World rules, as it will hopefully cover the Ares gunship and the Orion Assault dropship as well. When that one weapon that you're firing with in death could be an Arachnus Magna Blaze cannon on an Ares gunship, then it could be a very good use of two command points. And as always, if the enemy is swarming all over you, then the auto explodes ability could also be pretty great, particularly on a land raider who gets a big D6 damage explosion rather than just the D3 of the gunships. Next for 2CP we have Slayer of Nightmares, and this one's a melee only buff, and you get plus one to the wound roll if you're targeting a target that has a higher toughness than your own unit. For me I think this is going to be best with big units of Custodes infantry or jet bikes, as you're just going to get more value out of it the more models there are in the unit. In particular I think this could be fun with Verta's Praetors, if they are charging into a vehicle or monster with toughness 7 or greater, they'll be wounding on 4s with those lances, and then get to re-roll the wound roll, so you could potentially be wounding toughness 8 or toughness 10 units 3 quarters of the time. I think it would be a bit expensive to be using on small units of custodies, though even then, if it does give you a good chance of making the difference between a serious threat dying or not dying, then 2 CP could be a worthwhile investment. It's a pretty good thing that in 9th edition there's going to be more command points going for the Golden Boys. Next we have Fortress of Willpower, which is an anti psychic stratagem. It happens when one of your units is actually targeted by a psychic power. You can just literally roll the dice and on a 4+, plus it has no effect. And furthermore, you get to add 1 to that roll if you happen to be a unit of Custodian Wardens. 
not bad and pretty easy to weigh up based on how much you don't like that power that's going through. I suspect it's generally not going to be worth it typically to resist smite, but occasionally it could be helpful, say if it's the difference between a character living or dying. Next we have Indomitable Engines. This one's basically the 5 plus feel no pain type save against mortal wounds, very similar to Armor of Contempt in the standard Space Marine Armory. As usual, pretty useful if you're being targeted by a ton of smites on an expensive vehicle, but otherwise probably not going to be worth the command points. Then we have Superior Fire Patterns for one command point. This one's an infantry stratagem that we saw previewed, basically you get twice as many shots with rapid fire or pistol weapons that turn, particularly if you're deep striking a unit of custodians in. You could be putting out an absolutely withering hail of guardian spear shots. If you were using something like a crazy unit of 10 of the guys, then 40 strength 4 minus 1 damage 2 shots hitting on 2 sounds very good to me. Probably worth it on big units, less so on smaller ones. Next for 2 command points we have the Emperor's Auspice. This one's another defensive buff that you can layer on a unit if you really need one huge unit to survive. Basically you use this in any phase when an Adeptus Custodes unit is chosen as the target of an attack, and until the end of that phase, the opponent can't make any re-rolls for the attacks that target the unit. Absolutely excellent if you want to just get rid of a whole load of the buffs that the enemies have on one of their castle units, say re-rolls for Space Marine Chapter Masters or Lieutenants. I believe it won't even let you re-roll a command re-roll should they want to re-roll damage against a vehicle. It is pricey, I think it's only going to be usable if your opponent really has a stacked firebase with loads of these buffs. And they also don't have multiple targets they could choose with, so it's going to be one one huge custodian unit of some sort. But in the right circumstances, particularly combined with some of these other buffs, you really could have a unit just be virtually invincible for a turn. Next we have Blood Games Veterans. We already know that you can have your captains be veterans of the Blood Games, but now we can have it for the infantry squads as well. This one's a 1 command point stratagem if it's on a unit of 5 or less models, or 2 CP on 6 or more. You use it in the shooting phase, and until the end of the phase when you're shooting with a ranged weapon, every roll of a 6 to hit automatically wounds the target, and you don't have to make a wound roll at all. I think this could be particularly fun with Guardian Spears for the Custodes, as they're low strength weapons that have a high damage, so in particular combined with superior fire patterns for extra shots, I think you have the potential to really surprise an enemy vehicle with a powerful round of shooting. In fact, running the numbers, if you did go for an absolutely crazy unit of Custodes here, 10 guys with the Guardian Spears rapid firing into a vehicle and using this as well. In theory, you could blow up a Lehman Ross tank in the shooting phase, never mind the assault phase. I think that this could potentially be pretty useful on vehicles though, as there's nothing to stop you using it on them, and that's only going to be a one command point because they're less than five models. In general, it is going to be better on the lower strength, higher rate of fire weapons. It could really help out that Iliastius Accelerator Cannon on the Caladius Grav Tank, for example, particularly when targeting toughness 7 or 8 vehicles. So it is a fairly small buff in my opinion, but it could really help out in certain situations. Next we have Archaeotech Munitions for 1 command point, which is a buff to damage D6 weapons for 1 unit. If you're in the shooting phase and you're firing with such things, then for each point of damage that gets through, you roll 2D6 and discard one of the dice, which should equate to more damage on your target. Unless I'm missing anything, then I think this is basically a Custodes Venerable Land Raider only stratagem, as that thing could be chipping away with 5 D6 damage weapons, in the four last cannons and a hunter killer missile. It's not the most overwhelming shooting buff in the world, but it could help it out a little bit. It's going to be good for around about two or three extra wounds on your target on average, if you're also firing that hunter killer missile and you have some shield captain rerolls about, so it's up to you whether or not that's going to be worth it when you're using the stratagem. Next for 1 CP we have Auramite and Adamantium, which is a Custodes Terminator stratagem, and potentially a very scary one at that. Basically this is the stratagem to make your Custodes Terminators really annoyingly survivable. Basically if they're attacked by any weapons this phase that have an AP of minus 1 or AP minus 2, then the AP characteristic is resolved as 0 for the purposes of that attack. Now this one is an absolutely insane durability buff versus a large amount of weapons. Custodes Terminators in general aren't going to care about AP 0 weapons, their 2 up save and high amount of wounds is just going to mean that that's going to be virtually irrelevant to them. Also, AP-3 weapons aren't all that efficient against them either, as they start to run into the Custodes Invul save. Some of the things that do tend to kill them most efficiently are things like Auto Cannons, Imperial Guard Battle Cannons, and Missile Launchers, where you just have the perfect AP-2 to bump them up to their 4 plus Invul save and not waste any further effort. The existence of this stratagem just means that AP-2 weapons are going to be virtually useless against these guys, and provided you can spend a command point per shooting phase, it's just going to mean this unit is going to be really hard to remove unless you've got AP-3 or better dedicated anti-tank fire. 
Honestly, the existence of this stratagem is a really big deal. It makes a huge unit of custodies, terminators, a much greater threat on the battlefield. Perhaps in a kind of similar way to all of the attention that the Grey Knights Paladins are getting at the moment. It's just going to be able to make them monstrously durable. Particularly with this buff, but with also things like the Transhuman Physiology ability and the Vexilla for minus one to hit in the shooting phase. And you might even have weapons being able to shoot at them at minus one strength if you wanted to be that Shadow Keeper's Shield Company, for example. At one command point, this could be one of the best stratagems in the entire book. Finally, we have Fraternity of Heroes, which is the one command point heroic intervention at 3 inches with any custodies unit. We already saw this previewed, it's a great stratagem. It means that either your opponents have to stay away from your custodies and just limits their mobility a little bit, or potentially if they do make a mistake and leave something too close, then this could give you an entire combat phase with a custodies unit for one command point, which is almost certainly going to be worth it. Situational, but absolutely great when it'll go off. So overall, a really great amount of stratagems here, and it's going to be fun to see what custodies can do with the Midnight Edition, as I'd imagine that they're going to be getting the full complement of command points, barely needing to go over one detachment. My favourites are the 10,000 heroes for the extra warlord trait, which I think will be used a lot, the Dreadnought Duty Eternal stratagem, and the Auramite and Adamantium buff to custodies terminators. Frankly, pretty much all of them are very usable though, and I suspect will come out from time to time if you are using the appropriate units. Next, let's move on to the Sisters of Silence then, and as we mentioned earlier, the Talons of the Emperor special rule means that they can now be included in Adeptus Custodius Detachments. They don't prevent them from being an Adeptus Custodius Detachment, and they don't prevent them gaining any abilities, such as the Shield Host's abilities. Though the Sisters themselves don't gain any of the Custodius abilities, such as the Emperor's Chosen or the Sworn Guardian abilities. Interestingly enough, they don't have any faction keywords that they share with the Adeptus Custodius, but they specifically say that this is an exception to that rule. Alternatively, as per before, you can still field them in that Nor Maidens detachment, basically a vanguard with the Sisters of Silence units that doesn't have any command benefits and also doesn't have any HQ choices. I'm glad that they're able to be fielded alongside the Custodies properly now. Just with only one unit with three variations, they were never really going to be an army all of their own, and they actually really help cover an important weakness of the Custodies, which is their lack of resistance to Psychers. Also, having a few units of relatively cheap infantry in a Custodies force could really help them out. It's going to be a lot more sensible to have a unit of five Sisters of Silence with bolters sat back on an objective than leaving an entire Custodian Guard squad back on the same thing. It also means that you could have some potential chaff screens for your Custodian units, say if you've got enemy units coming in from reserves. It's far better that they unload maximum damage on a cheap Sisters of Silence unit rather than your very expensive Golden Custodies. They're just a really good asset to the army and are going to make the Talons of the Emperor far stronger as a whole. I'm not going to go over their data sheets in too much detail this time, they're exactly the same as they were before, at least as best I can tell. They are just three different elites units, the Prosecutors with their Bolters, the Vigilators with their Executioner Great Blades, and the Witch Seekers with their Flamers. Prosecutors with Bolters are 10 points a model, the Vigilators with the Great Blades are 15, and the Witch Seekers with Flamers are 16. No changes at all as per previous. They have access to their Nor Maiden Rhino transport, which again could potentially just be a good screening thing for a Custodes force. They could be pretty annoying to remove and require anti-tank firepower to take out, and they're only 65 points or 67 with that Storm Bolter that you have to take. Aside from the Rhino, all of the Assist of Silence units have the Psychic Abomination special rule, which means that if they're within 18 inches of the enemy, then enemy Psychers in that range need to subtract one from their Psychic test, and they're denied the Witch abilities and that stacks for multiple Sisters of Silence units within 18 inches, so say if you had 4 of them, then you would have minus 4 to cast and deny. Minus 4 is the maximum that you can go to with this, but in general that is going to be enough. In addition to this, they all have the Witch Hunter special rule, which means if they target Psychers, then you can re-roll the wound roll. In addition to just being able to take these units in Custodies Detachments, which is a really big plus in itself, the Sisters of Silence have actually got access to a whole bunch of stratagems as well which you access if you include any of them in a Custodies Detachment, or if you have one of the unique Sisters of Silence Vanguards. These are just another good reason to include a few of them in a Custodies Army. First up we have Empiric Severance, which is one that we saw previewed, and you use it when a Psychic Power is cast within 18 inches of the Sisters of Silence. You get to roll any Denado Witch rolls that you have, and then if the power is still going off, you have the option of stopping it with a roll of a 3+. Basically this means that if your opponent casts any one psychic power within 18 inches of the Sisters of Silence, you can near guarantee it that it's going to be stopped with combining this with a command reroll. This is going to be very usable in a lot of scenarios, in particular chaos spells like Warp Time or things for Eldar such as Doom and Jinx can be absolutely game changing. 
Just being able to hold up your hand and say no to one of these is really powerful. The short range is really its main limitation. Sackers will want to be falling back greater than 18 inches away from these sisters in the first place. So if your opponent does have a crucial spell, they might choose just to counter this by falling back a little bit further away from your sisters. Still though, it's a very, very good stratagem. Next up, we have one command point for a stratagem simply called Talons, which is a pretty powerful buff for a Sisters of Silence infantry unit. Basically, if you're within 6 inches of an Adeptus Custodius unit, then you can just re-roll the hit rolls for your attacks. Honestly, I do think that this has slightly limited use. It's not going to be much use on the Witch Seekers as they have Flamers, so they auto-hit. It's not going to be particularly powerful on the Prosecutors, as they're only armed with bolt guns. But those bolt guns can target a Psychic character, even if it's not the closest enemy unit. So maybe if you're going all out for sniping them, then it could well be worth an extra command point invested. Incidentally, I do believe that their wound rolls against Psychers have actually been buffed. In previous editions, I think they just re-rolled wound rolls in melee against them. Now it seems that you're absolutely fine to re-roll wound rolls with shooting attacks against Psychers as well. That's decently powerful, particularly on those Witch Seekers and Prosecutors. However, for the purposes of this stratagem, I think that the best use is on the Vigilators, the ones with those Executioner Great Blades. Vigilators are essentially two attack models with Strength 5, AP-3 and Damage D3 power weapons. Again, sorry about that, I think that they've been buffed since the previous incarnation where they used to be Strength 4. The melee assists of silence are certainly a bit better than they were before. If you didn't manage to get a full 150 point unit of these girls in combat, and a swinging with 10 of those Executioner Great Blades, for one command point you're getting another 4 or 5 hits with that Strength 5, AP-3, Damage 3, which I think is typically going to have a pretty good return on investment. Next, for one command point, we have Punishment Fire, which is a Prosecutor's stratagem, so the ones with the Bolters. Basically, it makes their Bolters 18-inch Assault 3 weapons, rather than the standard 24-inch Rapid Fire 1. Again, far more useful on a big unit, and honestly, I'm not sure how much we're going to be seeing these girls run in big units of 10. I think just small units of 5 makes so much more sense in a Custodes army. However, at least theoretically, if you were outside 12 inches but within 18 inches of the enemy... You could be netting yourself up to 20 bolter shots for one command point, which is pretty worth it. Again, could be very nasty if you are trying to snipe down a Psyker, who's maybe put themselves a little bit too close to your lines. I wouldn't like to be an Eldar Farseer on the receiving end of all that. Next, we have a one command point one called Desperation's Price, and this one's a little opportunistic one, which for one command point, if your opponent perils within 18 inches of the Sisters of Silence, then they take an extra D3 mortal wounds rather than just one D3. It's going to come up rarely, particularly as enemy psychers are going to want to be away from these girls. But when it happens, this is absolutely worth it for one command point. You might even manage to kill the psyker with this stratagem. Next, for one CP, we have Creeping Dread, which is a minus one hit roll stratagem. And it has to be used at the start of the phase, so before the enemy has actually allocated attacks to them. So not quite as reactive or useful in my opinion. But you use it on one Sisters of Silence infantry unit. And if the enemy is attacking them from within six inches that phase, then it's minus one to the hit roll. I'd say this is going to be most useful in close combat, as in the shooting phase, there's going to be all sorts of enemy units all over the place. So for me, this could be one to try and make those Vigilators work with those Great Blades, and try and keep them alive in close combat just that little bit more. After the Sisters of Silence units, though, I don't think that the Vigilators are going to be taking quite as much. They just really kind of do what the Custodies do already, with close range, high AP, melee, but are nowhere near as durable. Now I've said that, however, for one command points, they also have a stratagem called Decapitating Strikes, which is used on the Vigilators in the fight phase, and basically it's a nice simple plus one to wound stratagem. With strength five that they have now, they're going to be wounding Imperial Knights on fours, and virtually all infantry on twos. To be fair to them, point for point, they do have more damage output than the Custodies. Who knows, maybe we'll be seeing squads of ten of these in a similar fashion to Repentia Sisters, leading up in Normaid and Rhinos, and perhaps using this and the Talon stratagem to get a very hefty turn of damage output against something. Theoretically, if you did make Talons and this work on a 10-woman unit of the Vigilators, they, they would kill on average around about 9 Intercessors, or even put about 16 wounds on an Imperial Knight, which frankly really isn't too bad for base strength 3 infantry. Next up, we have the one for the Witch Seekers, as previewed by Warhammer Community. This one's Purgation Sweep, for one command point for small units of Witch Seekers, or two command points for six or more. Basically, if any of the Flamers roll less than a four for their number of shots, then it counts as being a four. It maths out at one extra strength four per Witch Seeker that you use it on. So on an optimum sized unit, it's going to be five extra hits for one command point. I guess it depends on the target that you're trying to fry. If they're hitting something like Intercessors, then it's probably not going to be worth it, as the Flamers just aren't that valuable against them. Could well be worth it to burn an extra couple of Orc Boys to death though, or maybe Elite Toughness 3 Infantry. Finally, we have one anti psyker and Anti-Demon stratagem called Immaterial Dissonance, 
and basically you use this against a psycho or a demon after you've hit them with a psycho out grenade, either in your shooting phase or in your overwatch. Until the end of that turn, the psycho or demon units can't overwatch, and it's also minus one to the hit roll, which is basically only going to matter in melee. I think this one's a little bit niche, to be honest. I think the no overwatch thing when it applies on vigilators just before they charge in after throwing a psych out grenade is probably the best use of it. I guess it could be handy on big units of psychers such as Grey Knight Paladins or maybe Chaos Obliterators, but I really don't think that this one's going to come up that much in my opinion. Overall though, I think that this is a really solid buff for the Sisters of Silence, and I'm sure that they'll be making waves in Adeptus Custodes competitive lists. Just to clarify, I don't think I officially mentioned it before, but the sister squads are elite's choices, not troops' choices, so you're not filling out cheap detachments with sisters, but that might be less of a thing in ninth anyway. For all the stratagems, I think probably the best one is that Empiric Severance, to just say no to a psychic power. The Talon stratagem is pretty useful on the Vigilators and the Prosecutors, and I quite like Punishment, Fire, or Decapitating Strikes for the Prosecutors and the Vigilators. I feel like the most common Sisters of Silence that we're going to see in Custodia's list probably are the Prosecutors, just because they're so cheap. 10 point relatively inexpensive infantry that also add anti-psychic powers are just really going to be a really useful include in a custodies army. I'm sure we will see some people using full Normade and Rhinos full of Vigilators though. So overall I think that this is a really solid update for the Adeptus Custodies. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with them when we get to 9th edition. The Captain Commander traits are basically an auto-include. The Shield Hosts can make you some incredibly fighty custody characters, and also give bonuses in melee to nearby units, which is an absolute godsend. And there's some very funky interactions with Aquil on Shield Terminators, able to tank wounds for things like Imperial Knights. I think that we'll start to see big units of Death Star custody Terminators a bit more. I think they were one of the better options already, to be honest. But ignoring all AP-1 and AP-2 weapons for one command point, it's just going to send them over the edge. The Sisters of Silence being folded in is a really big buff to the Custodes army. The biggest boons being the anti psyche stuff, and also just having cheap units to make sure that the Golden Boys don't get killed quite as easily, and help to counter the fact that they're otherwise a bit of a hyper-elite army with all the weaknesses that that brings. If I've missed anything or got any rules wrong, then please let me know down in the comments, or post a pinned comment as a correction, if there's anything that's too misleading that I've said. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics for future 40k content. We'll hopefully be looking at some custody army lists sometimes later at the week, so feel free to subscribe if you'd like to see that. If you've been enjoying the videos, I'd just like to mention the Allspets Tactics Patreon page, which is one of the main ways that I have enough time to dedicate to making 40k YouTube content. If you are watching videos regularly, then any support is greatly appreciated, as it is what keeps the videos coming. As well as helping support the channel, Patrons also get a few different bonuses. You get to see some videos each week before anyone else gets to, you get to vote on regular polls to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and there's regular monthly prize draws, where I post out quite large amounts of miniatures to randomly selected Patreons. This month we're giving away some Imperial Guard start collecting sets, and next month I'm hoping to get my hands on three copies of the Indomitus box set, and give them away as a random draw. If any of that sounds good to you, then please give a look to the link in the description. And a big thank you to my current Patreons for allowing this channel to happen. In any case, thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.